tension has been rising. Your players are thrilled. And finally it's there. The boss battle. Everything has been leading up to that point. Let's do our best to make it as epic as possible. Hello everyone, Evan from Monkey DM here. Instead of doing the mistake that a lot of games make, where the boss is just a massive damage sponge and doesn't really have any fun abilities, let's try something a little spicier. In this video, I'll go over five tips on how to improve your boss fights to make them more memorable for your party for an epic experience. Let's start off. Tip number one, using the environment. So for all of you that have ever played World of Warcraft, there's this boss and they're called Sludge Fist. This is a boss that interacts a lot with its environment. The boss room in which it is located has four pillars that the boss can destroy. And as the pillars are getting destroyed, the room itself starts to collapse on the players with debris threatening to fall on them. As many of you know, I'm sure in D&D 5e, bosses have this thing called lair actions. But why not make the lair actions change as the fight is moving forward? Are you guilty of this? I know I've done it so many times where it's like, mm, I have this cool encounter planned, but the terrain is just going to be flat 2D. Some of it comes from hardware limitation because it's hard to make a 3D battle on Roll20 or Foundry, for example, where there's not exactly a 3D scale, you're just facing a screen. But isometric maps can help with that, for one. And also, a lot of us, now that the... I'm not even sure I can say that word. Now that the big bad thing that has been plaguing the word for a little while is going away, more and more people are now starting to have in-person games again. And those games are the best for 3D encounters. But back to our sludge fist fight. Adding a dynamic environment, like the room crumbling down, is a really nice way of spicing up a fight. Something you could do, for example, is have your boss be in a room where there is a lot of flammable material. And, for example, a misplaced fireball by your wizard or sorcerer, or simply a fire spell cast by the boss itself, could lit the whole room ablaze, forcing the party to improvise a new strategy, as they don't want to be burnt alive while fighting the boss. This changes the dynamic of the fight mid-fight, and is a great way to keep your players on their toes. Another thing that you can add in your environment, for example, is teleportation portals, which take enemies back and fro locations and the party has to plan around that. Using the environment smartly can really, really spice up your boss fight. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell and like this video and let's keep the tips rolling. Tip number two, smart and dumb bosses. What do I mean by that? Some bosses will have a high intellect, high wisdom score and be more of a lich type where they scheme and they plan. And some of your bosses will be more of a big brutish enemy that doesn't think all that much. When you're facing the former, the smart one, something that you could do is have the boss study the party. For example, let's say that you have a party composition where the main strategy is always to pin down the boss or the enemy and then pummel them to death while they are unable to move. For example, a smart enemy might see that and devise a teleportation device or some sort of plan which will prevent them from ever being grappled by the barbarian and prevent that whole strategy from functioning. That could be an idea. Or for example, the boss could know that the rogue has a big phobia of water and at the pull of a lever, he could submerge the room entirely in water, potentially completely disabling the rogue, which in some occasions could be the party's main damage dealer. Those are all plans that a smart boss would think about. Now with dumber bosses, don't hesitate, they can make mistake. If the party, for example, taunts them into a pit, make the boss fall right down into that freaking pit, because maybe it's not smart enough to realize that there was a hole dug right there just for it. So using the intellect of your boss when you're planning the battle and the fight is a great way to have boss vary in intensity and degrees of planning, which make for a very unique encounter each time. Number three, time pressure. Let's go back to our example of World of Warcraft with Sludge Fist. That fight is under a timer because the room has four pillars and once all the pillars are destroyed by the boss, he slams into a wall and if he does so, the whole room collapses on the party 
causing a complete party kill. Now that's what I call a timer on the battle. Because of that, the players have to think smart and strategically on how to take down the boss as fast as possible if they don't want to die. Which, you know, probably most parties don't. Jokes on you, I'm into that shit. So, maybe that particular example is not the best because unless you really hate your party, which ideally you shouldn't, rock falls, everyone dies is not exactly a fun thing to happen. But there's ways to transpose that particular boss into D&D. For example, something that you could do is let's say the players interrupt a dark ritual meant to summon an elder god from its slumber and they arrive at the middle of the ritual. Maybe as soon as they roll initiative, they only have five or six rounds to take down the cult and stop the ritual. Otherwise, the big bad enemy will be summoned from the depth of the abyss. That could be an idea. And it could lead to a whole new story arc. For example, let's say the heroes fail and the ritual is completed in time. All of a sudden, this big enemy surges from the abyss and maybe everyone is knocked unconscious. And as they wake up, they are in a strange new dimension. Or alternatively, maybe the big enemy is summoned and runs in the distance. And now the party has to chase after it to prevent the world from ending. It can create some very cool new story arcs. Of course, don't do it with every single boss fight because what can be a fun and interactive mechanic every now and then could easily become just a crutch if you use it all the time. But it's a very fun way to keep players engaged and on their toes because tick-tock, the timer is going. Tick-tock, motherfucker! Or also, maybe if the ritual is completed, the whole fight gets a whole lot tougher as there is a new enemy coming in the fray and the party may have to run away. These are all potential options as to what could happen. Another thing that you can do to spice up your boss fight is to make sure to subscribe below. Number four, phases. What do I mean by that? Add phases to your boss fights. I'm sure a lot of you have already done that. It's a very common thing in a lot of video games and popular media in general, where, for example, let's take Legend of Zelda, Ganondorf. Always got multiple phases, right? Like first phase is gonna be the human form of Ganondorf, second phase he might turn into a beast, and third phase it's Ganondorf as a human again, but transformed or more powerful or something along those lines. And this is something that we can integrate in D&D as well. And to be fair, that has already been integrated in the game in Mythic Odyssey of Th Theros. Theros? Just put it on the screen. In that book, they introduce new mythic monsters, which are legendary monsters on steroids. Meaning that these monsters, unlike regular monsters, when they fall to zero hit points, they die. Mythic monsters, on the other hand, when they fall to zero hit points, regain all of their HP and gain new abilities. Basically a second phase fight, right? For example, I created the four dragons of the apocalypse, right? Taking the four horsemen of the apocalypse and turning them into dragons. The last one, Death, is a mythic creature. She has this ability when she falls to zero hit points where she regains all her HP. On top of that, the spell Armor of Agathis is cast on her at ninth level and during the time that she has the temporary hit points granted by Armor of Agathith, she gets some new abilities, which can totally decimate a non-prepared party. I mean, it's a very high CR monster. It's of course planned for, you know, level 20 parties and so on, but it illustrates my point. Granting your boss a second phase is a super dynamic way to spice up your boss fight because it creates new abilities that your players did not expect. As per the previous tip, don't do it all the freaking time because otherwise your players are just gonna end up expecting it. And you know, maybe you go from a two phase to a three phase monster to a four phase monster and so on. But you know, there's gotta be a limit somewhere. Now, fifth and final tip, alternative win conditions. I think this is best illustrated by the Vecna boss fight in the campaign one of Critical Role, where Vox Machina, had to fight against Vecna, a lich that was resurrected and ascended to godhood. Pretty big though, yeah. In that fight, they could not bring him to zero hit points, otherwise he would just resurrect and come back stronger than last time and decimate them. Instead, they had to go and plant trammels in the body of Vecna and then cast a ritual through a celestial book to banish him for good. Very dynamic boss idea from the get-go. 
and it was also glorious in practice. Why? Because now the party, for example, had to hold back their punches because otherwise they would risk killing Vecna, which would completely nullify their plan. It created some very tense situations where, for example, the barbarian of the party had to plan the last trammel but was banished and they had to break the concentration somehow without killing the boss. So as you can see, it created a lot of intense situations where everybody was sweating bullets, me, myself included, in the audience. So giving your boss another win condition, something that is not bringing him to zero hit point, can really add a new dimension to the boss fight because your party will have to think on a new strategy which doesn't revolve around punching the thing in front of you as hard as possible. And that's a really epic boss right there. One last secret bonus tip to make your boss fight more epic is also to give the villain a lot of roleplay implication. Meaning that if the villain is tied up to the backstory of a character or tied up to the story of the whole party, the fight is going to be all that much more intense because now there's an emotional connection in between the two and that emotional connection will be felt throughout the fight and that's an awesome way to make the boss more memorable. Now, during these boss fights, make sure not to make those common D&D mistakes, which I'm going to link the video to right here. And if you haven't subscribed by now, what are you doing? Do it. It's, it's right there. Hit the button. Anyway, that was Evan from Monkey DM. Thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you next time.